softball, then you are going to love the Fast Pitch TV show. We're bringing you more interviews, more videos, and more product reviews than anyone else on the planet. Sit back and get ready. Here's the Fast Pitch TV show. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Fast Pitch TV Show. Now if you found our show on Facebook, YouTube, or another video sharing site, please check out our website, fastpitch.tv. It's the place to find all of our past episodes and the place to keep up with our future episodes too. And if you have a Roku box or a boxy box hooked up to your television set, don't forget that you can now watch the Fast Pitch TV Show on your television set with both of these devices. Now, if you don't have one, you don't know what I'm talking about, probably. Now, earlier this year, I was in Louisville, Kentucky for Softball Con. It was a great softball conference. Now, one of the clinics I filmed while I was there was with Sandy Persall. Now, Sandy is the head coach of the University of Louisville. Now, Sandy's clinic was titled Aggressive Base Running. And let's watch that right after a word from our sponsor. Do you need a softball bat? Do you want to save $30? SoftballJunk.com is offering an additional $30 discount off the price of all non-sale softball bats on their website. That's right, $30. So the next time you buy a bat, go to SoftballJunk.com and enter the code FPTV30 during checkout. And wham! You just put a cool $30 in your pocket. I gotta tell you, one of the things that really, really bothers me about um, base running when I watch is just that um, players are not using their instincts. Coaches are trying to tell them what to do all the time. You've got to get those instincts going. And, Yes, some kids are going to be way better than other kids. They're going to be, they're going to have better instincts. They're going to be better. They're going to be aggressive. I mean, I have all extremes on my team. I have some that have the greatest instincts, and I have the other ones that are dumber than a box of rocks. Okay, and they drive me insane. Okay, so the best I can do is try to coach up those that are not very good the best I can, but they're never going to be great at it. Okay. Um, one thing we always tell our kids. We're always looking to take the next base. Always look. You've got to get your players to think ahead, look ahead, always be aware of what's happening. Um, we're looking for the drop balls. We're looking for that errant throw. We're never happy with just one base. We're never happy with one base. We're always looking. You guys, if your kids make a mistake, don't berate them for being aggressive. I'd rather see them be aggressive and go out than be passive and never get anywhere on bases. I have one player who's so passive, if I can get her to take another base, I'm lucky. But the problem is she probably could, and I'd rather that she took some chances, but she doesn't. So you, you got to give them that confidence that it's going to be okay, unless they do something totally stupid, which occasionally does happen. You know, that, that runner right to the, that ball hit right to the pitcher, runner on three, they go home, and you're like, oh, God, I wish I could grab you back. <laughs> but um, play is never over. Until the ball is in the circle, how many times does everybody return back to the base? Because they're just happy they got on first base. They got their hit, they're happy. Hi right, coach, I'm good, I'm going, I'm heads down, I'm already back, waiting here on the base. And the ball's not in yet, okay? A lot of things happen. The ball still can be thrown away, a lot of things can happen, they still might get another base. So we certainly do not want to see them immediately heading back to the base and clinging to the base like it is their lifeline, their support system, everything. Um, and that, that's that no celebrating at first base. I, I see that all the time. They're just so happy. Even my players every once in a while, they're so happy. Maybe they've had a little drought and haven't gotten a hit in a while. They're really excited they got their hit. But occasionally, things still happen in the college game. We still see balls coming in and, and not getting into the pitcher. Um, sometimes just, you know, coming around first base and the pitcher's not spend, paying attention and we haven't really gone back to the base, we're going to be able to make an advance to that next base. Okay? So it's getting them to spit, pay attention to what's happening out there and not tunnel vision. Oh, gosh. There we go. Um, we do, during live hitting on the field, is when we have our base runners really moving around a lot. And um, this is a great time for your, your runners to start reading balls off the bat. Okay, I, how many times have you had your runner come off of uh, second base on a line drive, but they have no idea where the ball's going and they're turning around in circles, trying to figure it out. And meanwhile, you've lost how many steps to scoring a run? Quite a few, probably. So we really, really want to set them in a, get used to reading the ball off the bat. I want them to know where our outfielders are in depth. You know, if my runners are on second and third, 
first. They'll take a look around and see where the outfielders are. How deep are they? Are they deep? Are they shallow? All these things are going to help them to make some decisions when that ball is hit. Okay? Otherwise, if they have no idea what's happening behind them, and, and I really, a lot of times kids get on the base and they are just, they're so worried about getting the signals from you, the coach, or, or I don't know what they're doing, looking at mom and dad, I have no idea. But sometimes they need to turn, look at the depth, look where the infielders are playing, get some ideas. I want to know where they're playing. Um, we want to work on, and we just did this, actually this week, we were indoors, as we all are, as we all love the snow right now. Um, and we just were working with our runner on three, breaking on the ground ball, reading it off the bat. You know, because if I got some speed and I could score some runs from just a ground ball in the infield, my runner on three, that's, I'm scoring runs, okay? The more runs I score, probably the better chance I have of winning a game, especially if I don't have great defense or, or my pitching's not real strong, so I gotta score as many runs as possible. So we go ahead and do that and work on that. Um, even indoors, you know, we'll have bunting or we'll try to just use our slappers to get ground balls because we're not allowed to, you know, take big cuts in, in our field house. So that's an opportunity. Um, anytime you can create game situations with live action, it has to be live. It's so much different. I mean, we can hit balls and our runners can run bases. There's no question we do that when we're working on our defense. But the real key is, it's different coming off a bat in a live situation. So anytime you can do this in a live setting, working on your base running, it's so much better. Okay, it's just so much better because they don't have any idea where the ball is going until the moment it strikes the bat. So when you, in that setting, we're probably gonna be using front toss sometimes, and that can create some problems because obviously there's a screen out there and that obviously stops some balls from going through. But you're still gonna get the idea. So any time at all that you can get live on the field with your runners, the better off your team's going to be in terms of base running and being aggressive and learning to get those extra bases. And encourage them in practice to be aggressive and take extra chances, okay? Nothing's hurt if you're out, right? It's just practice. So that's a great opportunity to really get them to feel what they can do, what they're capable of doing. They're going to get confidence in what they're doing. All right, and hopefully they're gonna learn some things. And hey, you know, nice advantage of putting some pressure on your defense. What a great thing, too. Your defense is gonna have to do some things that maybe they don't normally have to do. So, you know, encourage them to be extremely aggressive in that setting. Really, those are the kind of things that I talk about when we talk about being aggressive. But it's also your leadoffs, and leadoffs can be um, as aggressive as you wanna make them. Um, and it depends on, you know, we have the rocker, which everybody knows, where you're just, you know, it's just on the base, front foot on the base, and you're doing the rocker. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I'm starting to find that most of our kids have a really hard time timing the rocker and getting off base. I have some that are extremely good at it, and I have others that are very horrible, and they're still attached to the base, and the ball's probably left the pitcher's hand. So that's kind of a problem for me. So those kids that I have that do not have a good rocker start, those kids are now just in a normal with their back foot on the base like this. And they are much better. They're much faster getting on. So I have some that are in a rocker and I have some that aren't. I don't have a problem with that. Whatever's going to get them off the base. I used to have a problem with that. I used to think, everybody's doing a rocker. I don't care whether you like it or not. That was my mentality. I realized that some kids just cannot get that concept. So really, it's better off to put them in this setting. So what you want to do is go through a practice, put your pitcher on the mound, throwing, put yourself at an angle where you can see them lead off, and see, and if you want to do it on film so you can show them, do it in film, do that. Take a look. See which kids are efficient at it, see which kids are not efficient at it, and make the change. Or you can change them all over to just the back foot, if that's what you prefer, okay? I mean, that's, that's just kind of one of those things that you kind of have to play around a little bit with. Um, as I said, I, so I probably have three or four kids that are just direct, and then I have the rest are in a rocker start. Okay? Um, that's kind of a lot of the things, because I'm 15 minutes, I didn't know how much 15 minutes would take. So I was just kind of like, so now I'm in a, I'm in a free for all. So, you know, if you have <laughs> questions, I'm ready to just answer questions. I'm way better in that mood anyway. <laughs> Quit laughing back there, Scott and Carol. Oh, see, nobody has any questions? Seriously. Oh, well, and see, Courtney, you can go early. 
great. And you have more to talk about because you have way more on catching drills than I can talk about. Runners, okay, working on running. Let's talk about a little bit of running form, okay? Um, does, how many people here work on their runner's form a little bit? I know time is kind of an essence. Oh, good. This feels good. Has it helped? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, spending some time working with runners. If you're not good and you don't know a lot about teaching running form and things like that, talk to your track coaches. They're more than willing to help you out, okay? And that's a great area to get a little bit. If you can just get one step faster, how much better? I mean, one step can be the difference between it being safe and out at first, okay? The idea of those kind of things are great. Um, the other thing is just if you're, how many people are kind of working with a strength coach and working on flexibility and all those things? Again, good, okay. Those, again, are things. Flexibility, okay? Not going to be a great runner if they're very, they have no flexibility and this is about as much as their knee goes up. Probably not going to be real good, okay? So we need to work on those things. Strengthening up the flexibility will help their running form, okay? Some kids are going to be great runners. Some kids are not going to be great runners. Some people gravitate to softball because they were not good runners, okay? I know I did. So, I mean, sometimes that's the way it goes, okay? So you can only do so much. But if you can improve all that form, their running form a little bit, and get them to get used to that and work on it, it's going to improve their speed, and it's going to give them the opportunity to take more bases. Um, sliding, yes. Any question? Like on steel, sliding to second base, do you want to slide in first or deep first? Does it matter? Yeah. Um, Same thing for third and home. Oh, okay. So it, it was asking about sliding. Um, how I feel on steel is about head first and feet first in, and sliding and also at home play in third. Um, I like head first on steels. I prefer that. I think it's a little quicker. I think it's a little more efficient. I think it gives a little better target. Um, I don't mandate it necessarily to my team because some kids are better actually going feet first and some kids are better head first. Some kids only prefer to go head first. I do not like that at home plate, obviously, for a lot of reasons. But there are occasions, occasions at home plate when a catcher is really pulled off to the side. But again, not a great place because pretty good injury is going to happen because, let's face it, catchers are planted down. So um, I take them outside and see what they do best. Some kids can't do head first. They do a drop to the knee kind of thing, and that's not very efficient. Okay, so then for them, maybe it's much faster to go feet first. So you'll have to kind of play with that. Again, that's one of those things you kind of let them kind of show you. I think sometimes we try to, we have our set, and we're going to do everything this way, and sometimes we have to kind of flow. It's just like kind of like hitters to me. You know, there are things you have to do, but there are some things you can slide within. So that's kind of take them out a little bit sliding one day, take you know tar from the water. It'll make it fun. It is fun, although it might be a little cold at this time frame. It might be a little hot. Well, put them on the ice. Sorry. Slide better on the ice. Yeah, or a nice turf. You know, you get that nice, like our turf. Our kids have some pretty good sliding on our turf area, but yeah, it. You know, I, I, you know, before actually before camps, we used to do uh, slip and slide in camps because it was easier way of teaching the slide, and they loved it. And they thought it was a blast. Of course, now that's become such a liability, we have to take that out. But um, that's a wonderful way for kids that are a little bit more uh, nervous about sliding. You know, um, they seem to be a little less nervous when they're on that setting. We used to, um, back in the old old days, when we didn't have indoor turf and we had gyms. You know, you could do it on the gym as long as you, had, you know, pulled on long sleeves and you kept your hands up. It was a great way to get them to feel that sliding. But um, nowadays, with the turfs and things like that. Um, other things or other? Um, what do you suggest is the best, you know when you're grounded first mm -hmm. to go to second? Yeah. To not make that big arc, like arch, it just goes straight. To go, well, you're gonna, you can't go straight and make that turn <laughs> very well, easily. Well, but you yeah. know what I mean, not yeah. that big. Well, I don't like the, I don't want you to come, what we're doing is we don't want to run and, and pop way out and make this big circle. We want to make it a nice, easy circle around, okay? And practicing that and getting used to making that turn and getting into that inside back corner of the bag with this foot as we're making that turn, okay? And that's that's a matter of practicing and kind of learning that a little bit, okay? But we used to do that little, you know, big little turnout, okay? Not real productive, not real productive. It's just a nice, easy circle around there. 
Um, and as we come around, you know, you want to be able to pick up the ball and know what's kind of happening. It's the same thing as you run through first base and you're sprinting through third, first base, there's a thrower to first base. You know, as we come past, if we turn, we can often pick up that overthrow. All right, and if I can pick up that overthrow and make, and make a move to go to second, I can get there. If my base coach has to tell me to go, that's a whole nother second because now I've got to hear, process, and go. I just added on probably another second or so more, which probably is, equates to another out at second base with a couple more steps to getting there. So I want to be able to try to pick it up. And not always are you going to be able to pick it up. You know, sometimes the throw is going to be a little bit behind you. Okay? Uh, other things? Working on the, uh, the players, picking up a third base coach when they are in the Yeah, yeah. That's anyway. one of the things, yeah, that's a tough one. Again, practice it, practicing that. Um, we wanted to pick us up. You know, we, if the ball is hit into left field, center field, I want them to pick the ball up and read it and make some decisions on their own. Because again, okay, I'm on third base. I'm here, I'm watching them. I got to look, watch out here, come back, see where they are, come back. Okay, that's a lot of processing time. Process them, tell them what to do. Okay, I'm wasting a lot of steps. Okay, it's right out in front of them. They watch the ball coming to them right out in front of them. And they see it coming and then they can make that decision, oh, you know what, I can really come around second or I can make it to three because the left fielder's kind of bobbling or it's in the middle. So we let our kids read that. And again, that's something we practice and you can practice easily enough. Now, if the ball's hitting the right field where it can be behind them, that's when they have to look to process it, that halfway mark, look over to see because that's where I can handle it. Because I'm going to be seeing them and I can see where the ball is. So there's a very little time. It's a little harder when we start to get out into the field that way. And then another area is coming around third, is they're coming around third, is getting in a position they can see you. Okay, I'm, I'm not very tall. I'm not very big. So I can get blocked out by some third basemen. It's pretty good. And sometimes umpires. So I have to continually move. But I like to get down the line a little bit because if I'm down the line, as they're coming around, I have an opportunity to bring them hard around and keep them going or I can hold them up. But if I'm standing right e e with third base, you know you know those coaching box things? I don't know what those things really good for. They, they, should, they should not exist. That, it's just a chocolate thing. I, I, I don't know why they put them on there. I don't, even, I don't ever even stand in mine. I don't, it's too close to the field. So I don't want, if I'm standing there right third, I'm going to get really blocked out. It's hard, and my, my runner's blocked out from seeing me a lot. So I've got to consciously move, constantly make sure that they can still see me because I can get blocked out pretty easy. You know, you're a little taller probably than I am, so you might not get blocked out as much. But yeah. yeah. So, you know, it's kind of moving around. Just, you don't want to be a lumpy log sitting there just kind of hanging out going, you know. Just get down that thing, get down the line, help them out, let them see you, you know. And then working with them on the signals that you use, because everybody does it a little different. I mean, I even see some coaches in college still doing this. Come on, come on! You know, and, you know, All right, that happens. Have you considered hosting a tournament for your team or organization? VTD Sports is a company that helps people like you host events by providing online tools to make your job easier, liability insurance to cover you in the facility, and marketing for your events. If you're ready to host your 100th or even your first, please check us out at vtdsports.com or give our offices a call at 214-331-2500. I hope you enjoyed today's show. Now, to find out more about SoftballCon, just go to softballcon.net. Now, if you have an iPhone, an iPad, or an Android phone, you need to get the Fast Pitch TV Show app today. Just go to your phone's app store, search softball to find it. Don't forget to check out our website, like I said earlier, at fastpitch.tv. Become a fan of the show on Facebook at facebook.com slash fastpitchtv and follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash fastpitchtv. Well, that's all for today's show. Goodbye and thanks for watching. Pitch TV Network.